Hello. Today we're going to be looking in learning game A, Modern Technologies, and focusing on using cloud technologies. I hope you've got a pen and paper ready to make some notes. Remember, press pause when you need to, and let's get through the video. We have two learn objectives for today. The first one is for us to be able to describe how cloud and traditional systems are used together. Now, when we refer to a traditional system, this is a single physical device, such as a laptop or personal computer you may be using right now. Our second objective is to consider the implications for organizations when choosing cloud technologies rather than traditional systems. When working with our devices, we can use the online or offline settings. When using a device online, you will be connected to the internet for the using of the software or the cloud for your storage. However, when you're using the offline mode, this is software that does not involve the cloud or internet at all, and you are using just your device in front of you. Some software that uses the cloud also allows users to work in an offline mode. This means, for example, you could be using your device in your house where you have your internet connection, so you're working online. However, then you continue on your train journey to work in an offline mode as you have no internet connection. When you arrive to your destination of work, you may then reconnect to the online network and your device then becomes online again. When working offline, the data has to be manually backed up. Because you're not connected to the online state, your backup is not being done for you. However, when an internet connection is found, the files and the data will be synchronized, so any changes or amendments that you have made will be in changed and backed up to the file online. Files and data could be lost before your data is synced. So if you're working in an offline mode, and then you connect to your online network, you may find that you've still lost some files and this will cause great frustration. There are many factors to consider when you decide if you should use a cloud system or a traditional computing system. Some of the factors are listed below. See if you can think how these factors will differ between the cloud system, where you are working on an online mode, to your traditional system, where you're just using your device, and we'll go through some of the answers in a few moments. Okay, let's take a look at some of the differences between cloud systems and traditional computing systems. Now in the table, we have got our traditional and cloud separated, so you can see the clear differences. The first feature we will analyze is the cost. Now in a traditional system, where you have your laptops and your personal computers connected together, you may decide to use a server and other hardware such as cabling. This will be a cost that you have to pay for your system to be able to be created. However, when you use cloud systems, you don't have to pay for any of this system hardware because it's all purchased by the company that you are hiring from. For example, if I was to hire storage from Google Drive, this starts around two pound per month for 100 gigabytes of storage and ranges to 10 pound per month for one terabyte of storage. In this fee, I am paying for my renting of the hardware and the maintenance that the third party will be using. Now, in a traditional system, you own your device that you have purchased. You will also own your servers and cabling. So if you decide to sell any of those parts, you can reimburse some of your money. However, in cloud systems, all the hardware is owned by the third party company. Therefore, if you decide that you no longer need that storage, you can't sell any of the hardware to get some of your money back. When it comes to security, in a traditional system where you have your own device, you are responsible to making sure that it's safe and secure and your data cannot be seen by unauthorized users. This may mean that you have to hire experts or go on to some training to make sure that your data is safe. However, with the cloud storage, the third party company will find the highest, most skilled experts in this field to ensure that your data is secure. This can give you a lot of confidence and make you think that the fee is worth paying. The operating system and the software and applications on your system in a traditional computing setup will need to be installed by yourself. And you will need to make sure that the latest versions are updated and that all the maintenance is completed yourself. If you can't do this, you may have to pay for an expert to install the software onto your device. Again, however, in the cloud system, the installing and configuring 
of the operating system and the new software upgrades will be dealt with by the third party company. This again means that you will not be responsible for this and will give you peace of mind that is up to date and working correctly. When using cloud technologies, you may come across notifications. Now notifications are used to make users aware of new information and important actions that they need to take. You may, for example, receive a notification to tell you that your security update is ready to install. You may also receive a notification informing you that you have received a new email, as shown in the example from Tony Green. Can you think about two other notifications that you may receive when using your software or operating system? Hopefully you came up with quite a few examples of notifications from your devices or software that you currently use. Some of the notifications that are used in many places to inform the users of actions that have occurred or that they need to carry out are. In social media, you can notify users about people who have viewed or liked your post. So you may receive a notification saying that 14 people have liked your recent status. Or another example of a notification may be where you receive an email to tell that a payment has failed and therefore you need to re-enter your payment details before your order will arrive. Many apps such as WhatsApp and Instant Messenger receive notifications when you receive a new message from a contact. Let's take a look at synchronization. When we create a picture or a file on one of our devices, by using file synchronization, this allows the same file to be copied to multiple devices via the cloud. These files are also backed up on the servers of the cloud. So if you lose the original file, you can restore the backup. There's a lot of products that support file synchronization. However, some of the main ones are Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive or Dropbox. For example, if I was to take a file from my phone, this may then automatically go onto my tablet, my PC and also my MacBook. This means that on any device that I use, I can access those files and continue to work upon them. There are many factors to consider when choosing the right cloud technologies. The first factor we're going to look at is data security. It is crucial that cloud service providers are storing your data in a secure manner. You don't want to have unauthorized users accessing your files or data and causing harm to yourself or your customers. Remember, in a previous video, we took a short look at how plain text gets converted into encrypted cipher text and from the use of encryption keys can then go back into plain text for yourself. We shall look into encryption and ciphering in later topics in more detail. A major breach in security for a cloud provider could mean a massive loss of customers. Now, you may have seen in recent news lines that celebrities often have their leaked pictures released from their online cloud storage. This can reduce the trust and confidence in the cloud provider and result in a lot of customers moving to an alternative provider. The cloud providers will now employ a lot of experts in their field to try and keep your data as secure as it can be because they won't want customers to go to an alternative provider. When using cloud technologies, it is important that they are compatible with existing devices and hardware. If you can't use the cloud technologies on the brand new device that you just paid for, then you will not want to use that and you will find an alternative. Another factor to consider is maintenance. Cloud providers will perform software updates for all users automatically. This means that every user will have the most up-to-date and secure version of the software running on their system. Cloud providers will have millions of customers spread across the globe. This means it's very difficult for them to have downtime while they perform these updates, because although you may be asleep, the other users across the globe may then be awake, which means that the cloud provider does not have an ideal opportunity to complete the maintenance. Engineers will often be experts and highly experienced, however, they will also be highly paid. Again, this is a reason for you to have a cloud provider rather than a traditional system, because for you to hire these experts, engineers, would cost you a lot of money. We're now going to look at virtual machines. A virtual machine emulates or pretends to be a computer inside another computer. 
The virtual machine has a virtual hardware setup. It can also have different operating systems. For example, your Mac could also have Windows software installed and operating inside the virtual machine. This is called a guest operating system. If the guest operating system crashes, then it won't affect the main operating system and other virtual machines inside your system. We will look at how virtual machines are used for penetration testing when we look at system security in future topics. Another factor to consider when deciding whether to use a traditional system or cloud system is the speed of installation. The installation means the device being set up from being all parts to configure together to operating. A traditional server can take days to get working. You may decide what hardware you require. Do you need a server? How many cables do you require? What's the length of the cabling? And once you've decided for the parts of the server, you may then need to wait for the delivery of the product to arrive. Once the products have arrived, you'll have to install the operating system and software together for your traditional server to be able to be used. In comparison, cloud servers and storage are much faster to get working. You can have virtual machines set up in less than five minutes rather than five days or so in a traditional server. Saving this time can mean that you can get on task and be, be more productive with the time that you have. How the system will perform is another consideration to take place. With cloud services, you need a fast and reliable internet connection for it to work. If you don't have this internet connection, then your cloud technology will not be able to be accessed. If it's a computing task that is complex, it may actually be faster for it to happen on your local machine that you are using in front of you, rather than uploading it to the cloud and allowing it then to be processed and then downloaded back to your device. The type of device that you use will limit what software can be run. If, for example, you've got a smartwatch on your wrist, you won't be able to run a complicated 3D game on that device due to the capabilities of the device that you have. When we talk about performance, we also like to talk about the speed. Consider how long would you wait for a website to log you in? There is always a potential for a disaster to take place. This means that organizations have started to consider disaster recovery policies. Organizations need to plan for how they can recover systems and data in the event of a disaster. One example could be if your building was to set fire, you may need to receive backups of the data that you had on your systems. By receiving this backup, you can then reinstall the files and continue your daily routines. Another example may be if you were to have a local flooding. Your hardware will be water damaged and therefore your premises may also be not accessible. So having alternatives may need to be purchased or rented to allow you to continue with your daily routines. By using cloud technologies and cloud software, the data is stored at remote locations across the globe, which means it's easy to reinstall and recover the data in an event of a disaster. There are many disasters that companies need to plan for. For example, you may have a virus or a power cut, or as mentioned previously, there may be a fire or a flood. Can you think of any other disasters that may take place? There are many aspects to consider when creating a disaster recovery policy. We shall continue developing our knowledge of disaster recovery policies in future videos. However, some of the basic aspects to consider are people in the organization should be assigned roles. This will mean that everyone will know what to do in the event of a disaster. If we take our school, when we have a fire drill, you may have noticed that different individuals have different responsibilities, ranging from the teachers that will escort the students out of the building to the other members of staff that will be stood at specific doorways, blocking them off or allowing exit routes, to other members of staff who will go around to the different rooms to ensure that no students have been left behind. A disaster recovery plan might also consider what a company could do in certain events, such as a flyer or a flood. This could include lifting all IT equipment to a higher floor. So if your building, for example, has 17 floors, you may decide to move all the equipment from the first to 10th floor up to the 11th to 17th floor to make sure there's less chance of water damage. A company that relies heavily on computers need them to work even if electricity supply fails. Therefore, for your disaster recovery policy, you may decide to invest in a backup generator that will operate on diesel fuel when your electricity is currently lost. We should also consider 
when using cloud technologies to have data backups. Now, as mentioned previously, cloud service providers will often make the backups automatically for you as part of their service. This means you don't have to remember to take the backup and therefore don't lose the work once it is lost. Traditional software, however, does require your organization or yourself to make the backups yourself. This could involve a process known as the grandfather father son backup model, where you will have three copies of the file in case your original or your first backup fails, so you have a last resort file to access. You will need to make backups daily, and as you may understand, this will be very hard for some users to do. And if you forget to take a backup, you then, when you come to recover the data, may realize that it's not accurate and it's missing important files that you have now lost since your last backup. A final topic we're going to look at when using cloud technologies is its responsiveness. People, especially more recently, expect websites and services to respond in seconds or they will leave for another site. I'm sure you can think of many examples where you've tried to open something up and it's taken longer than you desired and have therefore closed it and moved on. Many websites or hosting companies will offer uptime guarantees of 99.9% .9 or higher. Uptime is the amount of time that the website is accessible to its audience. If the website is not available, this is referred to as downtime. The longer a website is unavailable, the higher risk of users going to rival company websites and therefore will never return. 